Hi, Cancer. All right, welcome. Happy uh, Equinox, depending on when you arrive. Okay, so I took some notes. We have a moon card. Um, whilst we shuffle, as this reading is just going to be a flow. Um, so you still have time. Thanks. You still have time for something. You still have time. Um, it may not feel like that, though, some of the time. If you're having hard dreams... I heard put a... Put a well, wh what time does that mirror into? It mirrors into, like, supper time. So... I got I heard something I saw someone praying at a table. And there was a feast. I just went back in time. Sorry for that space. Uh, and then I was trying to figure out the thing that we just recalled in our mind, if that's something we're supposed to share, or if it's just meant to be there to... It, it's not about whether that came true or not. Because I think that's part of the question. Maybe what's true to you? Oh, I also saw um, like a wolf uh, or a pointy-eared canine family howling. Oh, the and then that song, you know that song, Howling For You, Howling For You. Thank you. That's all we need to look at for now. Okay. <clears throat> it's important that you're alive. This goes back to the Pluto and Pluto and uh, Cancer generation. <clears throat> That's like before the Great Depression, right? It's a, such a what a sad way to remember, but maybe we need to remember sometimes. But there's something about that Pluto. I guess what generation is that? Um. I guess it depends how old you are. But your great grand your great grandparents, your great great grandparents depending. <clears throat> Where have you been, Cancer? Trying to find the Zen. Some of you went some of you been by the water. That's good. I hope you went in the water too. But you were looking, okay, where have you been? On the edge of two things. On the edge of two things. And you've been learning a lesson through Libra. Mars is squaring uh, Venus. Has been and will be, which is... I guess this is also the masculine and feminine in you, like what you do and how you feel, how, you, and there's awareness in the mind. It's like, okay, well, if I feel like this, I could, I know the natural reaction is to act like that. 
sometimes there's a need to want to curb that. And then other times it's uh, trying something new. So yeah, in between places. <clears throat> this also has to do with Sagittarius, which is interesting because you have been learned, Cancer collectively has been learning through Sag for how long has it been? I want to say about a year. So this is Jupiter and the moon, right? It's this expansion because the moon is the mind. So it's expanding the mind and learning, being open-minded to things, re reworking emotional spaces. Um, it's also pushing out, I heard, prickers in relation to emotionally how you stop yourself when you come to a crossroads or how you behave when you come to a crossroad. And I guess I'm seeing that tradition where you leave something at a crossroad when you don't want it anymore. But then after that, you have to choose and you obviously don't go down the path that you just came from because that would defeat the purpose of walking the road, right? <clears throat> Interesting. Oh yeah, you had to cut off something emotionally too, right? Kritika comes before your moon card, uh, which is before Rohini, which is a knife, right? Some some kind of... But the, <clears throat> the thing that a person was separated from was actually for... Whatever that connection was taught a person what they needed to know or more about what they needed to know about... Or I heard something about how to try new things or how to not react. Someone had red hair. Also see Pisces, there's a lot of Pisces energy in this, Pisces and Sag. Where are you? Okay, so that's where you've been, that's what you've been learning about. Where are, you, where are you now on that path? Oh, the moon. So some of you have Sag moon, Cancer moon. Remember, it's tricky, but the moon is the mind. But the moon is also how we feel. How we process that information and how it flows through our, that mental space through our emotional space, which then turns into either energy to I heard to harvest or to um, collect and then use. <clears throat> you may not have a lot of energy right now or the even even with Mars um, well actually the way that it is you're meant to conserve your energy actually. Or understand time different, but remember that you still have time. I'm also seeing something. I wrote down hard dreams. I guess we talked a little bit about that, but I must let's split this up. If if I'm sensing that around a dream that you would like to come true, which I guess is like a fantasy perhaps, or um I guess we could go as far as goal, but dreams are usually soft on the edges and kind of, you can't really tell where the edges are, right? Kind of Piscean, Neptunian <clears throat> frequencies, but there's something about what you want to do in relation to where you feel like, oh, I don't have time to do, maybe that... Maybe there's a negativity around time because I'm seeing these hard edges around the dream. <clears throat> but they're not necessarily geometric, so I feel like they're placed out of stress. Does this make sense? And it's, I don't think it, it could stop what's wanting to be created within that dream, but it, 
it makes it harder for you to connect in the way um, it makes it harder to connect in the way you want to Oh, it was like you had a dream, but then there were all these people around you. You were going through your own stuff too, but like there were all these people around you that either were going through tower moments. It's like I just saw all these buildings crumbling <clears throat> and then someone was in the middle of it. But this was a really long time ago. Um, I'm just explaining like what I'm, well, I guess what I'm seeing. So... So I think there were things that a person didn't want to see around them and themselves. But I heard you can't close your eyes to yourself, right? You could say, I don't want to look at the, this. But how do you close your eyes to yourself? Looking down at this, this wisdom just popped off the book. <clears throat> Sag talked a lot about wisdom. Let's see, the moon, <clears throat> pardon me. <clears throat> the lungs are always hot in, uh, when Gemini and Mars are together, especially if you're a smoker. Okay. This reminds me of an epiphany. So the, so an epiphany comes to a person. And then I heard it, like angelic kind of church music. Um, singing like. Uh, and then that turned into Gregorian sort of chants. I feel like religious music would be helpful, Cancer. Whatever you connect to, it could be <clears throat> just mantras that are sung or, again, some kind of... The majority of the frequency's purpose is to learn how to feel at one with wherever we came from. There's the magician, Sag had their title was the magician. Interesting. Where I don't want to go that way. Who? This reminds me of the um, when Neptune joined the moon. The, so the last, so the last full moon, or there's something about the full moon's really important. Because it, it, there's the same story where one is facing this way, right? Well, it's actually, let's go with what's naturally happened. I'm facing, you're facing this way. But you're looking this way. It's... I'm seeing like a mariner's compass. Um, Okay, the in-between place, 
that was that was your past that that showed us your pat what you've been, been experiencing you're not actually there anymore at this weird and but it it had weirdness to it <laughs> um but but it also had immense beauty um but 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 either way you can't stay here forever because the the line in this place this in between place is always changing so you can never actually really sit still for that long. <clears throat> but in this present moment, I feel as if this darkness is, is because night, right? It was daytime and then night came and I feel like back here is the ocean and the person is walking the beach so that they don't, you know, everybody knows you don't go swimming at night in the ocean. It's dangerous. So, by her, come with me. I guess pre presently too, if we want to get back to who's who's swabbing the deck today, um, Moon could talk about, especially with Venus going through Libra, um, making your house more beautiful, putting flowers in the house. Uh, washing the windows on the inside and out, you know, just <clears throat> putting things, maybe changing the art on the walls. It's, it's putting a, a touch of um, grace into what you have, but also warmth, right? Okay, <laughs> cute. Well, I suppose we can look at your challenge now. What do we what do we got for time? Seventeen even, we'll take it. Okay, so your challenge is the star. Your challenge is your ch I was gonna say your challenge is healing and we have the eight of the eight of swords here. So your challenge is isolation. Consciously, you now understand destitution, how you cause your own, other people's, your own. It's <clears throat> so I guess, <clears throat> however, I heard however strong we want to seem in relation to those hard edged dreams. Someone didn't like themselves for so long. They still may not like themselves. Uh, they're hard on themselves. Mentally and that actually affects the body. There's certain, there's a story too that someone Just a minute. Well, I'm not afraid to emotionally go into whatever this story was that was coming through. But it's almost as if this fence kept coming up between me and it when I was trying to connect with it. Or when I was being present with it, rather. I wasn't trying to. It just happened to pop up. You want to trust yourself. I heard follow the purple fence. Which again is kind of the edge of something. Again, maybe that's what you've been learning here. You know, say you're ever lost. It's like you, you find the edge of the riverbank and you walk it. You'll get there, right? You... <clears throat> I heard find the edge of town. Oh, you have to climb a sand hill. 
That's hard to do, to get to this magician. So if you're in a weird, you get in a weird mood for, and you can't explain it, or you just feel like you need space, I guess, temperance. All these cards sort of talk about this, like I'm going to be in my own. It's more of what a person knowing what they need versus I don't want that. The moon's really sensitive to you this month. I mean, you should know that. Well, that sounds rude. Sometimes the moon's so elusive. I guess that's what's tricky about it, but more awareness around the moon could be helpful for you. I don't see this as like basking in the moonlight. It's just being aware of what cycle, because that cycle happens every month, right? And that gives us an awareness of kind of how we behave now of course every month it's a little bit different of an energy but like in the zodiac it all it all flows together right and all of us on the path of that those 12 paths there's bumpy places right there's sharp places I heard, and even though someone doesn't like themselves still, sometimes, I heard gives themselves way too hard of a time. Um, I really feel that a person emotionally has some kind of awareness where they're like, it. I heard if I hit that razor blade forest, I don't have to walk through it. Do you know what I mean? Because the path actually right now is kind of easy. I mean, sometimes you have to um, get your feet wet. Sometimes you have to climb that sand hill and like get get up there. But but for the most part, it's flat and it's soft. Okay, let's see your last card. Oh, the Empress. Mountain lion, a puma, a white puma. Hmm. So the empress, uh, the moon is exalted in empress energy, right? The empress is the ultimate feminine. The mind's a funny thing, right? Let's see. Oh, speaking of the moon, there we go. Now I know what to do. 20, we're good. So your moon card, your nakshatra. I can't say, I have a very difficult time saying nakshatra. So I say nakshatra. Um, Rohini is your moon card. And this is actually where the moon is exalted in Taurus. Uh, technically, it's between 10 and 23 degrees Taurus, so maybe some of you have stars there. But I just want to read the wisdom of Rohini. It's called the Star of Ascent. Okay. The star of Ruhini inspires us to love and care. It incites us to help uplift humanity through the distribution of prosperity. When we have picked this card for contemplation and advice, which is what I did, what we did, it says you may ask yourself how you can contribute to creatively Oh, excuse me, how you can contribute creatively to improve the world around you. Rohini wants us to spread beauty and comfort and abundance.
How can we bring beauty and love upon the world where it is most needed? How can we improve the fertility of the land? It says this, this Nishadara gives us the inspiration to grow crops, plant fruit trees, or maintain a beautiful garden. It says volunteer with or donate to a charitable organization. Apply for a grant to complete a creative project. Rohini says go right ahead. If the above feels too lofty or above your capabilities, maybe it is good enough to take a walk in a beautiful garden or to enjoy a concert or some sort of art exhibition. Perhaps allow yourself to become involved in a romantic laser. <laughs> I can't do French. A little romantic. It says even though the, the accent lies on making everyone comfortable on the material plane, the ulti ultimate aim of Rohini is to reach for enlightenment. And after this is the star of searching, which is when it's the energy of the moon and Jupiter together, which is actually what's happening uh, for you at this time. So it, it's as if things are in line, you still have time. I heard just try to work on the hard edges around your soft dreams or if things are too loose then it's okay to reel it in a little bit you know if there's a lot of slack there. Wow, decisions, planning, and control. Okay, so maybe some of you do need that. All right. I love you so much, Cancer. I hope this was helpful. Talk to you next time. Peace.